Hi, my name is Bert-Jan Schrijver. I'm CTO at Open Value, and I'd like to talk to you about software design. So if we're thinking about software design and thinking about making um, sensible software design decisions, I think one key choice we often face is whether we're going to make a specific solution or specific design. So something that's tailor-made for use in a single place or tailored to a specific problem or scenario or that we're going to make a generic solution. So something that's more flexible and uh, reusable, uh, something that you can apply to a wide range of problems or, or scenarios. So if we are introducing a generic design, then we're typically also, also introducing coupling. So coupling, you could say, is the kind of degree in interdependence between different building blocks of software. Uh, it's a measure of how closely connected two, two components are. Usually coupling contrasts with a cohesion. So low coupling is high cohesion. So be careful with coupling, I'd say, because coupling is typically one of the things that makes software uh, harder to change, right? Coupling means that if you, you want to change something and then something else needs to change as well, or you didn't mean to, to, to change this. So any generic solution introduces coupling. So uh, you could say that the downside of solving something generic uh, is coupling and, and be prepared to handle the effects of this. So if you've read the, the clean, clean code book, then you know about dry, right? Don't repeat yourself. So we've been all been taught that we should write clean code and we shouldn't repeat ourselves. And when we find something uh, in uh, something that we want to solve for the second time, then we shouldn't copy it, but we should reuse it. But I'd like to make a point and saying that copying code isn't, isn't bad at all. Uh, the downside of having duplicated code in multiple places is that, well, when you need, need to make a change, you need to make change in multiple places. But I'd say that duplicated code doesn't hurt you until you first need to change it. So if you have one situation, you copy it to another situation, and they both remain unchanged for years, it doesn't really hurt you. Uh, and my point is that you probably don't know what the generic solution will be anyway uh, at this point in time. So we're often talking about future-proof design, right? Should we be prepared for future changes? So I think design should be structured to accommodate change. But it's also clear that we cannot uh, predict the future. So if we're talking about making choices whether to go for generic or specific solutions, we can make these choices on all kinds of levels. So it's on a code level, class level. Are we going to have manual written code or generated code? Libraries going to go for specific or, or generic. Uh, data, we use data types uh, on services and even on organization level. We're going to share code between parts of the organization. So whenever you face this question, should I solve something generic or specific? Uh, well, I can give you a couple of tools that will help you decide. So first question is, do we really need this now? Do we really need to make a generic solution to reuse this or is it fine to copy or not make it generic at all? So the uh, Yagni approach helps there. You ain't gonna need it yet. The five W's. If somebody wants to make something generic, ask them the five W's. First is why do you want to make this generic? Because of X. Why is X. Why, why, why? Keep asking why. And if you keep getting sound answers, okay, then it may be a good idea to go generic. If not, you may want to go specific first. Think about time and effort for generic first specific. Generic is often more work. Uh, also keep in mind the myth of the first time right. You're probably not going to get it right the first time, but probably only in the second or third uh, use case you see for a piece of logic. And think about the rule of three. So the rule of three is a nice and simple rule. It basically says that when you're reusing code, copy it once and only abstract it the third time. So this helps you avoiding writing the wrong abstraction. And it's easier to make a good abstraction from duplicated code than to refactor the wrong abstraction. So the first case is you just build it, don't genericize at all. Second case, you duplicate, you redesign, and you extract common behavior while you change. While the third case is you examine the lessons you've learned from the first two cases, design a generic solution that will make it easy to add your third case, and then, then you're good to go. So something that you can also keep in mind is, is Conway's law. So organizations design systems that mirror their own communication structure. So don't try to force a solution that goes against the organization structure. If there are three teams that don't want to work together for reasons, it's probably not going to work too well by creating a generic library or generic service that these three teams will use. So be in mind that even a prefer perfectly designed generic solution can fail because of 
organizational constraints. Also think about the cost of a generic solution. So it may save time in the long run, but at which price? So another rule of three is that building reusable components is three times as difficult as single-use components. So the price you pay here is coupling. Coupling between classes, between services, between teams, between organizations. So both on a code level and on a team level. And what if you get it wrong? What if you tend to make the wrong decision? So there are no zero cost abstractions. Every abstraction you make has some cost. So efficiency gains of generic solutions are, are typically clear, but how about onboarding new people on a more complex uh, generic solution? Readability of code. If it's specific, it just does what it says there. If it's generic, you may need to check out the source of some library or re reusable component. Think about coupling uh, again, obviously. So if you're writing bad abstractions, then you're maybe writing unnecessary reusable code, unnecessary coupling. Maintaining uh, bad abstractions can be a problem as well because it, you need to go over this code time over time. It can be hard to see, hard to understand and hard to extend. So when or why should you go uh, generic? Well, bad reasons are we've always done it like this. We don't want to depend on libraries. We need to be future proof. The product owner wants it or the architect wants it. And valid reasons to go generic are when the rule of three checks out when you're pretty sure you're going to need it almost everywhere, like uh, security or, or metrics and logging, uh, when you envision a library that a lot of teams will use, or when there's complex logic or skills that only a couple of people have, then you can also use the encapsulation of a generic solution to basically shield the solution from uh, people, from people who, who are not capable of working with this. So uh, to summarize, um, consider YACNI, the rule of three, the five W's, think about the cost of going generic, uh, think about the scope and level where you can apply this, class level, library level, organization level, think about Conway's law on an organization level and think about impact on, on your organization. So should you go generic or specific? I'd say it depends. Um, a, one quote that I love to, to apply here is that a program that works perfectly but is impossible to change will become useless over time. Whereas a program that does not work but is easy to change, it will become and remain useful continuously. So I guess to conclude uh, this uh, a final statement, and that's write simple code. Thanks for watching.